So we've looked at left rectangles, right rectangles, midpoint rectangles, and trapezoids. Um, the midpoint rectangles we're not going to use very much. Uh, when we do the midpoints, it's actually going to be with tables of data. And um, the only reason I do that is because it's on the AP test. They do that. Um, I don't really like it because when we do that, we lose data um, because we're ignoring stuff. We're ignoring information that we have when we do that. Um, so personally, I don't like it, but we're going to do it because you need to know how to do it. Um, what we're really going to use a lot, though, are the left rectangles, the trapezoids, and the right rectangles the most. Okay, so let's let's talk about those. Um, for each one of these, we're going to we're going to be splitting up an interval into sub intervals. Um, the first thing I want to say about that is that we can divide them up into sub intervals any way we want. We could split it up into sub intervals that look like this if we wanted to. Um, and sometimes that would be useful. Let's say we're driving a car. Um, we're driving around in the city for a little bit, speeding up, slowing down, so we want a lot of data points. And then all of a sudden we're on the highway and we're on cruise control for a long period of time. There's no point in saying, okay, I'm driving 70 miles an hour now. Now I'm driving 70 miles an hour. Now I'm driving 70 miles an hour. Okay, you don't need that data all the time. So you don't always have to have equal subintervals. Um, once we start doing stuff with formulas, though, those, sub, those subintervals, um, well, we want them to be equal if we can just to make things simpler. So I'm going to divide this up into subintervals here. Um, so generally we use A and B as the left endpoint and the right endpoint of the, uh, of the interval. Um, and then we'll also use um, x sub zero as being equal to x sub or as being equal to a, um, and then however many rectangles we're going to do or trapezoids we're going to use, um, x sub n will end up being equal to b. Okay, so when we had the example with four trapezoids, this ended up being x sub four here. Okay, if we were going to do a hundred trapezoids or a hundred rectangles, this would be x sub one hundred. Um, and then we just count. So we would have x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and so on. Now, if a is equal to x sub 0 and b is equal to x sub n, uh, we talked about this already, but how do we find the width between each of those intervals? How do we find delta x? b minus a over n, n right? So we take the width of the interval. Um, if the interval has a width of 2 and we're going to do 4 subintervals, we would do um, 2 divided by 4 and each one would have a width of 1 half. Okay, so we take the width of the interval, divide it by the number of rectangles or trapezoids we're dealing with. This is a formula that works only when they're equal subintervals. If, if they're going to be irregular subintervals, then um, delta x is going to vary. Okay, um, so if I want to know, let's say I want to know what x sub 3 is, how could I figure that out if I knew what x sub 2 was already? Add just add delta x, right? So to get from one x value to the next, we always just add delta x. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down mathematically. This is not necessarily a formula that you need to know. But to get any x sub n, um, or I'm going to use i here. To get any x sub i, I'm not going to use n because I don't want you to get it confused with just being the last one. Uh, we would take the one before it, so x sub i minus 1, and add on delta x. So to get any x value, we take the one before it and add on delta x. And we just do that over and over again until we get to the right end point. All right, so this is just a little terminology here. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that you understand that a and x sub 0 are going to be the same thing. b and x sub n are going to be the same thing. Uh, you should know how to find delta x. And you should be able to find each of the x intervals uh, or the, each of the x values by just adding on delta x over and over again. So if you start at A, add delta x, you get x sub 1. Then you add delta x again, you get x sub 2, and so on. All right, so once you do all of that, we've gone through the, the derivation of these. Um, and so for the left rectangular approximation method, um, we're going to start with the left endpoint, and we're going to go until we get to the second to last x value. We're not going to use the right endpoint because we're using left endpoints. For the right one, we're going to use the right side or the right x value of the first interval, which would be x1, and go all the way to x sub n. Um, and then you can kind of see it here. 
Um, it's not immediately obvious, but the trapezoid is the average of LRAM and RRAM with equal subintervals. Um, and notice that the first one and the last one only occur once. Everything in between is twice. Okay, and that just comes from the formula of those trapezoids. All right, and then also remember that the trapezoid one, we take delta x divided by 2 because we are finding the average of the bases. Um, so we would take x, x sub 0 plus x sub 1 divided by 2 and, and so on. Um, so those, those are the, the formulas that, that you'll use, um, again, assuming that they are equal subintervals.